Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Uh, you might recognise this exact spot from the last video. I've just shifted slightly over to the side. I thought I may as well smash out two bits of recording in one day, be efficient and all that. Um, pretty windy, it's pretty grey. It's really nice actually, it's just nice to be outdoors. I, I know I waffle on about this all the time, I said it in the last video. Sling Mountain's great, it's so convenient. But if I can be outdoors, I'm gonna be outdoors. Um, I don't know if it adds to the ambience or not, but you know, the wind whistling through the trees, I can hear this bird, I'm not sure what it is, tweeting over there, maybe someone put in the comments what bird that is, I'm pretty sure you can hear it. Uh, it's just nice to be outdoors, isn't it? It's probably my happy place. Um, yeah, it's just such a nice place to be, the views and everything. Today's video though, it, it's sort of a, a mix of two things, but around the same theme. I want to just look at how you can stay safe really easily at the top of the crag when you're setting stuff up, stuff up in terms of like top roping, bottom roping, setting up abseils. So kind of in a work sense for those of uh, you who are watching who are like rock climbing instructor trainees, those kind of people. But equally it could be that you're setting up top ropes, bottom ropes for you know your kids or a group of friends or something like that. Still really important to stay safe. We can all cut around on these ledges and feel pretty invincible but anyone who's done a lot of this especially in a work sense when you're out you know all the time day in day out most of us have had a little wobble I've never come close to falling off a, a, an edge of a cliff when setting up but I've had those moments when you've just thought oh that that little wobble could have turned into something more and that happens especially when you're like a new instructor or you're a bit young or you, you're going through a cocky phase and you're trying to be quick and rushing because there's some time pressures on these kind of sessions in a work sense a lot of the time. It's not worth skipping that safety element though. In terms of your reassessment, if you're going through to your rock climbing instructor assessment, it's such a big deal. As an assessor, you know, provide these courses as an assessor and as every other assessor is as well, we're really on it. We really expect to see you keeping yourself safe whenever you're near an edge. I'm like two meters back from an edge here, so I'm pretty happy cutting around without being attached on. But as soon as I'm near that edge, peering over and all that kind of thing, I want to be clipped into something. And this is where lanyards come in to their own really in a work sense, right? I use this one. It's a Kong slide and this little plate costs five or six quid. You can get it from Decathlon, I think. I'm sure you can find it on Amazon and other places and stuff. Real simple bit of kit. You add your own rope. I'm pretty sure it says nine millimeters on the instructions for that. It'll tell you the length, but it's probably like one and a half meters, two meters. You'd have to have a bit of a play. Uh, and you put a little barrel knot in one end that just stops it slipping through if it was to slip under weight uh, and you just you put a figure of eight you take that out each time to make sure it doesn't get any wear and stuff you can inspect it properly uh, so i'm going to just tie into that as you would with the rope there's loads of other lanyards out there uh, the petzl connect ones are really nice they're a bit more money they're more like 35 pounds i'll put a link to these things below they are really nice to use I've just never quite felt the need to upgrade from this because it kind of works all right but it is a nicer bit of kit it just adjusts more smoothly so for me figure of eight it's going through the top and bottom loops in this one uh, with this bit of kit read the instructions for the particular lanyard that you end up going for i tie it in and then i do my little yosemite finish with an extra wrap just to keep it nice and neat and stuff so in a work sense certainly in an rci type work sense this is just part of my kit that goes on at the beginning of the session. Harness, helmet, I know I'm not wearing one, but I would for a work sense when I'm cutting around, there's people around and stuff, feel pretty happy here. Then I put my lanyard on, as simple as that. On the end of my lanyard is a self-locking carabiner. Climbers don't like self-locking carabiners. I've no idea why really, because they're flipping ace. Um, this is just an action uh, where you turn it and open it. You can get ones that need to be pulled down across up little ball to be pressed all sorts this one is just super quick with the best one in the world when you're trying to be a bit rapid and clipping in clipping out you'll get to a point where you go oh, i won't bother doing it up yeah that's just real life i reckon or you'll forget to do it up this thing there's no excuse bang in done bang in done it does itself up worth its weight in gold that little thing i reckon so i'm not gonna do anything with it yet i can just clip it back to my harness somewhere I've got a bit of kit in here and I'm going to imagine that I'm about to set up a top rope or a bottom rope or whatever. Okay, so I get the end of my rope, which is just down here on the floor. 
most setups start with a figure of eight. I'm not going to go through the actual setup, but I need to do this bit to get us going. Uh, so it's a figure of eight. Make sure you dress it properly, full on textbook stuff. Uh, got a bit of a tail, so let's do a stopper on there. Keeps it nice and neat, fully felt and braces, isn't it? And remember, you might be teaching other people. You might have an assistant as an RCI, so you want to set the scene with textbook stuff, stopper, touching and all that kind of thing. I'm going to go up to here. Haven't put a screw gate in it yet. Flip it, flip it. So that means the gate is away from the rock and stuff. Put your loop in do it up there's no point not doing it up do it up straight away you're going to double check but it's one less thing to have to do and remember isn't it so that's done up it's only one piece of kit but it's being attached to one piece of kit better than being attached to no pieces of kit i reckon so um so what i need to do is somehow fix myself to this i could do a clovich couldn't i put myself into that do that up problem with that though I do all my adjustments of you know equalizing stuff and then I come out of that and suddenly there's that much slack in it so you've messed up all your equalizing uh, you can roll a clovis so you can move up and down do that up obviously quite easily by rolling that uh, I don't think it's ideal and when you are doing your equalizing because I'm attached directly to it, it ends up pulling it at a funny angle so it's not ideal could I do the same thing though with my lanyard and put a clove hitch in and adjust that to make sure I stay snug on it. It's still taking up some slack, isn't it? So it's still causing a bit of faff. So what do we know that we could put on there that won't take up any rope? It's a Prusik. I've left them over here. There we go. The Prusiks, the Decathlon ones, I'll put a link to these below as well. Not the Decathlon ones because they're out of stock, but some very similar ones that work. Uh, so. Let's use a prosthetic for it. This is my go-to method. I love this, works really well. I'm gonna use a Clem Heist. It's pretty grippy. We don't need it to release under load or anything like that. We're not jumping off edges or anything. We're just cutting around at the top of a crag, okay? Give it how many wraps it needs. You know, I've done five or six there, whatever it is, and test it. Okay, well, that's locking up, that's great. Now I get my lanyard and I clip into that. Could I go straight into it? Yes, I could do that up. I could, and there's a bit of tail there, but I still find that when people are sort of adjusting stuff, you get that angle so it messes up the equalisation a bit. And often people's prussics are a bit shorter, so they're even closer to them. So personally, what I like to do is clip into that and adjust this so it's the right sort of length that gives me some movement, but not loads of slack in the system because we don't want to be shocking onto stuff. So if I was working here now, for example, I'm near an edge, Right, I don't really want that slack, so I just push that up to there. Great, so I'm snug on it. I'm not like abseiling on it or anything, I'm just snug on it. As I move up and down, I can take that with me, slide it up, slide it down, position it. So it's really good, isn't it? If I'm near the edge and I've got another, I've put another bit of gear in, well actually, maybe it might be sensible to clip directly into that. And because it's a lanyard, it's really quickly adjustable. Slings are a bit of an improvisation in my mind for this lanyard use as a, someone who's working or setting out to do this kind of thing a lanyard is the right tool for that job a sling is improvised so i'm sure we've all forgotten a lanyard at some point and we've used a sling larks fit it in probably and all that kind of thing has it worked probably has it got its flaws yes we have to be extra specially careful about not introducing any shock loading we don't want to shock load anything let's be honest but especially careful with a sling so i think certainly in a professional sense lanyard is something you just gotta have all right once i've set up my master point and stuff if i'm setting up that top rope or group house or whatever then i'm gonna clip into the master point itself right and get rid of this prusik put it over my head store it whatever but before i've got a master point this is just a nice way of doing it i reckon okay but remember it is only on one point could you build two into there link them with a sling or something absolutely you could yeah absolutely you could remember when you've got a master point multiple pieces linked properly use that instead where it's appropriate so there you go there's just my little um, ramblings about using a prusik and a lanyard to stay safe at the top of the crag remember other lanyards are available but this kong slide is a bargain which is why i think there's no excuse for not having one you will see some people just have a bit of rope tied to them brilliant 
little bit harder to adjust only a little bit though you can tie a knot in it or whatever can't you but for five quid i think it's really worth it personally please do fire away with any questions it's getting flipping windy now i hope it hasn't affected the video too much um do click the like button smash the subscribe button find us on insta find us on facebook i say it every time thanks very much for watching more videos coming up very soon mm -hmm.